Hello, my friends, and welcome to Quartet. We come to you every two weeks here from our little town in West Virginia, Berkeley Springs, just 100 miles down the road from Washington and Baltimore. And we come from the Arlington Institute, and we hold forth uh, four of us, typically, to talk about the most significant kind of things that are happening in this world, and particularly related to the extraordinary change that we're in involved with. I'm John Peterson from the Arlington Institute, and I'm joined today by Penny Kelly. Hello, Penny. How are you? Hi, John. It's good to be here. Hi, Kingsley. Uh, we'll miss Greg, but we'll do a good job. We will. And Kingsley Dennis from England. How are you, K Kingsley? Uh, greetings, John, Penny, everybody. Uh, good to be with you as always. Yeah, and sadly, uh, Greg Braden is, well, I, th I think it's sadly that he's on an airplane right now, I hope. <laughs> it's sadly for us, at least, uh, that he is not with us today because he's on his way over to England, as a matter of fact. Yeah. So um, maybe there's a chance that Kingsley's going to run into him. But in any case, uh, thank you all and uh, and welcome to those of you who are viewers. We very much appreciate you coming and being a part of all of this. And this is only one of a number of programs that we have here at the Arlington Institute, all related to trying to uh, shine some light on the path forward into this new world, this extraordinary kind of new world that's going to be populated by new humans. And so it is change unlike anything we've ever seen before in our lives and, you know, potentially anything that's happened on the planet before. And so it's a, it's a big time with big opportunities and extraordinary kind of uh, in interesting kind of implications. And so that's what we're about. And this is what we try to do. All right, well, let's move on to our topic of this morning. Um, or the afternoon, wherever you happen to be. Um, and uh, let me set it up by saying this, is that uh, in the last uh, three or four days, and we alluded to it in some of the comments and when we started this uh, discussion today, is that there have been a number of uh, very significant kind of events of blowing up of the pipelines and other such things which all are pointing to a dramatic, the possibility of a dramatically new direction uh, on which, in, in which the world goes. I have uh, read now uh, in the last two days, maybe four different articles, all explicitly saying either World War III is starting or World War III is, is World War III starting or, you know, we're in the middle of it or some other kind of thing, all making the point that uh, that this is qualitatively different than what it's been before and that we're into a space that is quite unusual. This is one thing, uh, I guess, from my point of view, it's one thing to uh, see those kind of comments from independent kind of analysts, if you will, who are espousing their points of view. Yeah, but when you couple it up with uh, what Martin Armstrong and his computers uh, talked about, which we have mentioned in multiple times on this forum, Marty Armstrong's Socrates computer uh, has been saying, which has never been wrong in the past, at least, uh, is suggesting that, and has been for years now, saying that uh, starting in the first quarter of next year, four months from now, three months from now, is the beginning of, will be the beginning of World War III, and uh, which then leads into a global uh, civil war in uh, beginning in 2025. And it is essentially based upon a previous understanding of the underlying cyclical kind of relationships that have uh, maintained, if you will, the kind of the legacy eras that have existed on this planet. Do you see that? is that uh, you, it's a model, and it's a model that is based upon the behavior that has been exhibited in the past. And to the extent that you go into a new space where things are not like the past, it's not just a war, it's not just climate change or other kind of things that you can see the kind of cyclical relationships, 
uh, if this is something new and you're like I suggested earlier, you're into a new area in space where the whole energetics are different and the, and, uh, and you get a, uh, you get a change of the magnetic fields or whatever it turns out to be. Those kinds of things are not, uh, they, they don't seem to me to be kind of uh, baked into his, his model. And so uh, what you're, what you're seeing here is the 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 a split, uh, which we've talked about before, and there's a split that is this techno technocracy kind of technographic, if you will, uh, split that goes off where technology takes over and and dominates and controls everyone, and and uh, I think what Marty Armstrong is. Uh, describing essentially is this steady state projection into this dystopian kind of future, which includes all this this disruption of uh, uh, global civil war and ultimately the disintegration of the United States and the European Union and a whole reorganization uh, in a new way. But that's not necessarily the future at all. That is a scenario, essentially. And a scenario is this putative kind of image, idea, vision of a possibility that you can look at and say, mm, well, I don't think I like that one. And so you can change your behavior such that that world does not emerge. And the question kind of is, how do you in the middle, as you go forward into this thing in the context of all this amazing disruptive fundamental kind of change that's going on on the planet how do you how, you know what do you what do you bring to uh, world war three i mean what do you wear to world war three <laughs> it's kind of the question and you know how do you how do we uh, as uh, individuals who try to see the world differently and see ourselves differently how do we deal with this whole kind of kind of space Okay, well, I'll tell you, when I saw the topic for discussion today, um, I was, I just blanked. It was like, I'm not having World War III. <laughs> I'm not doing that. I'm not, what I see and what I've been working for, for toward for 40 years now, is when, because I didn't know that there would be a period that would be called the period of World War Three, and that information came from the robes. I saw how it was going to play out. A lot of legal arguing, a lot of positioning, a lot of posturing, a lot of lying, a lot of misperception, a lot of, I'll call it immature consciousness, etc. And so the goal for me for the last 43 years has been to open a doorway um, through that whole thing and to bring up a new perspective and a new consciousness and not get too tangled up in all the stuff, be informed. And so that's been the way that I have moved forward. And for me, World War III started about five years ago. Um, it has not looked like a normal war. If I be really honest, it started in 1963 on November 22nd. Um, and watching that whole thing unfold, and then the sequence of uh, so-called leaders, um, watching that leadership quality go into the toilet um, was really hard was hard to watch and what i have been doing in my teaching and my books in my youtubes and patreons um, is trying to bring up perspective or teach people how to see things from multiple points of view how to get beyond what i'm going to call the singular perceptual disorder to complexity and to multiple points of view and to walk through those possibilities in their own mind and discover their own path. It's the, it's the wonderful um, diversity of points of view and possibilities and skills 
and perspectives that makes the world this wonderful, interesting, um, powerful place of all sorts of possibilities. We are the ones creating the reality. We do that with our responses. And what I see is just one bad decision after the next in which they don't, um, they know specifically how to create the kinds of antagonism, the kinds of slavery, the kinds of fear that they then turn around and use. And they're creating that. I'm creating fourth and fifth dimensional kind of thinking. I see that we're reaching a tipping point of consciousness that I think is fabulous. And it will kick in after the first of the year. Like you say, the future isn't written in stone. It is written in the sands and, you know, depends on our perspective is how the wind blows. Now, whatever, whether it's going to be a, a World War Three, I mean, that's a kind of archetype event. But as you said, there could be a number of events. But whatever it's going to be, I think fundamentally it's going to be a reality check. It's going to be a reality check. And as Penny says, it's going to be really testing us about how we respond to it. Because it's, what's coming up is that we really need to kind of establish our modes of perception to yes. deal with what's coming. And that's fundamental. So, you know, I mean, what's been happening up to now is, you know, we've been seeing a lot of um, what we call the red pillars, people taking the red pill and going from 2D to 3D perspective. A lot of people are saying, well, yes, I can see that these events have been orchestrated by hidden hands and these are the puppets. But what we're really talking about is going beyond that to what we, what we may call the titanium red pillars, the people who are going beyond the physical to the metaphysical. And we have to see that these reality checks are really going to put us into that kind of push where we have to say, no, it's, you know, these are not just physical events. What's going on are metaphysical events. And so if we get that perspective, then this is what we can bring to the table. Now, let's say, for sake of argument, if World War Three is going to break out or something equivalent, then if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. But there'll be a reason for that. And the reason will be to obviously something can come out of that on the metaphysical level. Maybe we have to go through the dark night of the soul, as they're calling it, humanity collectively. Maybe we have to go through it. But if these events, John, have to be experienced at some level, it's because I would say um, they have to be transmuted. It's not just to, to say, you know, I'm going to take that and be impacted and be negative and, and reactionary. The question is, are we going to transmute those events into something better? It's not just thinking about, can we, you know, uh, find a safe haven? Can we find a physical safe place if we can't transmute them uh, on another level, on let's say an inner level, on a metaphysical level? Very well said. Uh, the uh, I think the point that both of you are making that's really kind of central to all of this is that that you cannot in the face of all of this engage it emotionally you can't we kind of bring it to yourself you can't get consumed by these things because then they've got you you know they've um, they've emotionally captured you and you become part of that narrative uh, on the other hand, as we've said before, the, there's no well, good excuse for ignorance in the face of all of this kind of change. And so you need to be aware of these kinds of things you, so that you don't get surprised. But it's like, uh, you know, if it's in a play, right? And you're participating in a movie, but a play is probably a better example in that uh, there's a role and there's a narrative and that's going on out here. But you're always in the back of your mind you know it's not real you know that you don't have to get caught up and and uh, internalize it all because when you internalize it then of course you manu <laughs> you manufacture it you keep manufacturing what you're feeling emotionally in the middle of all of this and so uh, i'd certainly agree with the both of you is that uh, what this gives us all is an opportunity to uh see ourselves and see the world and see the future in a different way. So, well, thank you both for uh, this delightful kind of conversation. And thank you to our viewers uh, 
Quartet for being with us here today. We do this every two weeks to come together and uh, Greg will be back with us next in two weeks and we'll have another topic of significance to kind of talk about and to plumb and and, and mine uh, in different ways. Uh, we come to you uh, from the Arlington Institute, which is a little research institute think tank that I started 30 years ago to try to anticipate these kinds of futures and facilitate the transition to this new world. And uh, we produce and are part of a number of kind of programs, including transition talks, which is a speaker series and the future edition, which is a newsletter. You can find out information on all of this at arlingtoninstitute.org. And we hope that you'll do that. And uh, we really like and hope that you'll come to transition talks. And you can do that either virtually or you can do that in person here in Berkeley Springs. Every month we bring a marvelous speaker to talk about some mind expanding aspect of this big change in what's going on or the titanic kind of shift that's underneath going on underneath us. We've got a wonderful one coming up here on the 22nd of of October with uh, uh, Dr. Rainer Wiebiger for coming over from Germany to talk about global scaling and that there's this, this underlying uh, uh, universal kind of relationship that holds this whole reality together. And once you get, understand what that is, it becomes the basis for being able to do new designs and new institutions and new relationships and new healthcare and other things because it's all got this thread, this almost godlike deistic kind of thread that goes underneath and through everything. And so that's the kind of things and we hope that you'll come. So thank you again. And so let's go around the table one more time and uh, say what, uh, what do you think is going to happen in the next two weeks? And you can... You can be either positive or negative if you would like to be. <laughs> Penny. Oh, my. Well, you know what? I have no idea what's going to happen in the next two weeks, but I know what I'm going to be doing over the next two weeks, and that's watching this very interesting mix of politics, um, economic issues, and I'll say... Uh, like human reactions, because the reaction is going to show me what the future is going to be, because the reaction creates. And so I'm watching to see what are we creating over the next two weeks, because this is a critical point in time. Yeah, it is. So, yeah. Kingsley. Well, um, I would like to say um, world peace and universal love. <laughs> um, but that's um, for Jean-Marie. Um, but actually, no, not quite yet. Uh, I think similar to Penny is that I, I do feel that there's, uh, you know, all these iterations. I mean, you, I can't single out anything because it's all kind of, you know, coalescing. But I do feel that um, more people are going to be red pilled and what I call the Titanic red pill or Titanium red pilled is that they're moving from the physical perspective to the metaphysical perspective. So I think, you know, finally, you know, if you start bombarding people enough, they will start to, you know, to really kind of be shaking their perspective foundation. So I would like to see this time, there's going to be more, more movement on the inner world as well as on the outer world. Yeah. Well, I certainly hope you're right about that. It looks, uh, from, my, from my point of view, it, uh, I'm kind of focused being outside of Washington, D.C. on this uh, midterm elections coming up here in the first week in November. And uh, there are many kind of indicators and prognosticators and predictors and whatever who are all suggesting that something very large and very disruptive is in the works. Within the time leading up, it's the kind of classic uh, October surprise as they talk about in politics back here before the election. And uh, so uh, uh, we may be talking about a whole bunch of other different kind of things uh, when we come back two weeks from now uh, here on Quartet. And so thank you again, both of you, for the conversation. And thank you, uh, our friends from all over the world who watch this. We appreciate it. And we'll be back 
again for Quartet in uh, two more weeks. Thanks. <laughs>